Good evening, all. Uh, thank you for attending uh, this evening's uh, annual State of the City Address by the Honorable Robert Brenneman, Mayor of the City of Worcester. Appreciate you doing this uh, every year, although it is mandated, I think, in the charter. <laughs> but I know, no, it takes time to put together, and we appreciate you doing it and uh, look forward to what you have to say. So you have the chamber here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, President Biden, Dyke, and council members. Nice to see everyone this evening. It, it truly is my honor and privilege to uh, have a chance to uh, talk about our city and where we uh, believe we are heading as, a, as an organ organization, <coughs> as an administration, and as council. But also then sort of reflect back on what happened in 2019 that brought us to where we are now. So, so a lot of good things. So we'll start right in. Um, this picture on the, the screen right now is uh, a picture that um, Money Magazine used when they called us the 37th best place to live in America a few years ago. And it's a picture that we had supplied to them. Uh, showing our cities, but I, I thought it was a, a pretty neat view of looking westward off of, on um, Liberty Street in our downtown. So, so that was a, a kickoff to where we are. I want to start right in with the goals. Uh, these are nine goals that uh, we uh, came to uh, consensus on within the administrative team and uh, management team of the city, and these are things that uh, we hope to uh, achieve this year or at least uh, start down the path to achieving them. We'll just go through them real quickly, acquire developmental land for economic development, continue planning and site needs for a community center, uh, start planning for fire station number one upgrades and timing, downtown southeast quad of square improvements, Clear Creek Park construction, Daisy Way connection to Old Airport Road construction, road improvements at West Highland Road and Sunset Lane, sludge handling tank and wastewater improvements, and Christmas run pool evaluation and planning. So uh, we'll go through each one of these uh, individually uh, and make sure we uh, highlight all of them uh, and then get into the, the look back a little bit. So our first goal is proposed develop developmental land. And I am pleased to say that uh, this is something we've been looking at for at least five years. Uh, I think I had shown council uh, past state of the cities where uh, we had noted it or I had noted it each time. Um, we are finally to a place where I think we can achieve what we need for a city as far as developmental land. And it's on third reading in front of you this evening. So my hope is that um, uh, council will see uh, fit that this is a, a wise investment for our city. Uh, we know that there is a need for 30-acre uh, sites and larger for developmental needs on the state level. And uh, this would definitely uh, put us in contention for uh, t sites that are looking at the state of Ohio to locate in and, and then uh, us would, you know, we would have a, a pretty nice position, especially in Northeast Ohio, as being one of the only few with these, this kind of an acreage position and the utilities and roadways and all the infrastructure pieces. So this is the 5L farm uh, just north of Daisy and Scheffler. Uh, Daisy Way is uh, there, uh, highlighted in red. Um, Guyers Chapel Road is also red. In the way back of the picture, you see our water tower that is off of Melrose Drive. And so uh, the property is outlined there in green, and it contains about 148 acres, I think is what uh, the picture shows. Uh, about 138 uh, is, is developmental land as far as we uh, have ascertained. So um, this is a, uh, an important step forward for us to have room uh, in our city. We've done it once before as, as an organization, as a city organization, with what was called the Byzantine Farm back um, in the early 2000s, maybe late 90s. Uh, and it came uh, about because of some uh, net windfalls uh, due to some rubber made retirements uh, when Newell was, was looking to take them over. So, so it, it, it is not unheard of. Uh, Orville does this, has done it twice for business parks, and they're working on a third business park <coughs> um, using 
their, their uh, governmental funds to do that and uh, have had very good success in, in, in achieving that. The land itself, uh, we have uh, an agreement with um, the uh, Riblets, uh, who are the owners of the 5L farm, uh, for t uh, approximately $2 million purchase. So it's just a little over 14500 per acre uh, looking at it. So that is the, the first goal, and I th as I say, I think we are uh, on the cusp of uh, having that happen. I'm hopeful about that. Our second goal is continued planning and site needs at our community center. Uh, you heard me talk about our community center uh, having good bones. It was built in 1976, uh, so it's uh, about 44 years old. Um, it, we first uh, identified uh, making this a goal back in 2017. So we've been working on it. Uh, one of the constraints was we've, we've got some thoughts about uh, expansion uh, to meet the needs of an older senior population and also uh, a younger uh, child population who are the two main components of our community center. Um, but we were pretty well landlocked and uh, didn't have any places to expand to. So that's something that we've been working wor with council on in uh, acquiring some of the lands. Uh, these two homes right there are on um, Buckeye Street and uh, they are actually about to be uh, taken down. Uh, they are both in, in pretty bad states of repair um, and pretty well um, bug infested uh, places right now. So uh, getting it down to vacant land I think is a, is a wise move for the city uh, even if we don't develop something there in the, in the near future. Um, so that's something that uh, is goal number two. Goal number three, well I'm sorry, goal number two, this is something we've been working with the rec team on to say okay what would fit our community center well? And so we went and looked at three sites about two weeks ago. One was in Ashland, one in Wadsworth, and one in Talmadge. This is the, the walking track in Ashland, and this is a component I think has a lot of interest in the community and uh, I think people would uh, enjoy and use. Uh, in Ashland, the walking track is up in the, in the uh, highest portion of the building and then it looks down into uh, two basketball courts and a uh, third court uh, multi-purpose type of court. And uh, that is uh, some of the early design drawings we've had have sort of that same setup. And um, we feel that uh, that would get quite a bit of use if, if it was down at our community center. So. So the next goal is start planning for fire station one upgrades and timing. Um, we've really upgraded most of the buildings here that are city owned. Uh, the community center and the fire station one are really the last two buildings that we really feel need some uh, TLC. And uh, our fire station, it was built um, back in 1961, so it's about six, approximately 60 years old. Um, and it does continue to serve us well, but it is uh, really a vintage uh, of the 60s age. Uh, if you think back then, there really weren't computers to speak of, and uh, now the world runs on computers. Um, you know, radio systems are all in, tied in with the computers, uh, so the wiring in that building really are, is not uh, adept to handling the loads that are, that are currently out there. The size of the building is, um, uh, a bit problematic because back in the early 60s we only had men as firemen. Now we have men and women as firemen and so the, the quarters that are in the building uh, had to be remodified in, in the space that we have. Um, also it, it's just a pretty tight building for the crews that we run out of there. Uh, as far as the location we are comfortable that it, it is in the right spot to serve our city well. Uh, we have two other fire stations, uh, one up at the safety center near Bueller's and the other one out on 585 just south of Aldi's uh, where uh, station three is. So with the, the combination of those three we feel that will serve our city well for, for many years to come. So that's why we want to uh, upgrade this. We are planning to uh, build it into our budget projections over the next four years and, and maybe uh, take uh, bits and pieces and tackle them in, in each year's time frame. So, so that's one of the goals that we're looking at. 
Um, something that's going to happen this summer is our downtown southeast quad. This is our fourth goal. Um, we, did, we did the northeast quad within the last two years, and I, I think that was a pretty uh, good success story there. It surely has brought a lot more uh, uh, people into that sector of town and uh, kept the parking the same. So, so we're, we're pleased with the outcome of, of the northeast quad. Southeast quad has, uh, has a little bit more uh, infrastructure uh, difficulties because uh, that's where we've had a lot of the brick heaving and uh, potential trip falls in, in that region. So it, it definitely is time to address that. Uh, it will be a, a nice addition to in front of Omahoma Bob's and uh, uh, Tulip Ham Bakery and the, the Irish store, uh, to name a few, that, on that stretch of land there. So that should kick off uh, this summer and uh, hopefully get completed before year end, uh, but uh, I think weather will become a dictator on that. So our fifth goal is to build Clear Creek Park. This is something that I know Council is well aware of because we've been working on it for a couple of years uh, with the Seaman Group, uh, Seaman Corporation, that has uh, built, made it the land available to create a park out there adjacent to the tennis facility that they built. Um, this is, these are the latest and greatest plans that we have in place. Uh, we do have a, a lot of monies that are involved with uh, making this happen. We have OPWC monies and we have um, Clean Ohio grant funds and, um, and also NatureWorks and those have a timer usually that you can't start until after July 1st of the year. So we can't touch anything until after July 1st on this project. Uh, we, can, we can take bids but we can't let the bids until after July 1st. So, that's going to dictate the, the timing, but we hope to have this completed yet this summer or, or early fall. This is the sixth goal, and that is to construct uh, Daisy Way between Old Airport Road and, uh, and Daisy Way. Um, this is something that we've wanted to have happen for many years. Uh, Air, Old Airport Road is uh, one large cul-de-sac, in fact, something that we would not even allow in the city in this day and age because it's too long. Our safety service personnel have a hard time dealing with something that long. Um, this actually is an interesting slide. Uh, to talk about safety services out there, we've had 131 uh, emergency calls out in this region uh, with an average of two active fires per year. So it's, it's not something that, uh, you know, safety calls don't happen in this. Uh, we have well over, I, I'd say, 2,000 people a day out on Old Airport Road with the industry that's uh, out there and only one way in and out. So. To have a connection across to Daisy Way and out to Guyers Chapel Road, I think, will be a huge improvement for us. Uh, again, a good story. We uh, uh, talked with the county, and, uh, and the county decided to set up a transportation enhancement district, a TID, and uh, we applied for funds through that, and we received two hundred thousand dollars towards this project from from that state agency um, that governs those funds. Uh, also, we uh, got 250000 from ODOT Jobs and Commerce as a grant. So we, we've got a, a lot of outside monies coming into it uh, to make this happen, and uh, it is slated to build this summer. It also would be uh, the entranceway uh, off of a, uh, a good industrial roadway into the, uh, the park on the Leatherman Farm, or the 5L Farm, if, if uh, that happens to come to pass. So that is uh, the thoughts there, um, and uh, that moves me on to the seventh goal, which is road improvements at West Highland and Sunset Lane. Um, these are two streets that have uh, been in need of some uh, upgrade uh, and have reached the top of the list now. Uh, Sunset Lane is uh, between Melrose and Armstrong Drive and uh, Melrose School is on it. Right now it's got uh, ditches uh, and, and uh, culverts in there, uh, not a, a good way to let kids walk to school. So with this upgrade, we'll be doing a curb and gutter uh, street with uh, sidewalks that are being covered under the Safe Routes to School uh, funding that we were able to receive in that area. 
Uh, on West Highland, between um, Tatum Lane and Oak Hill is where the construction will happen. That will improve uh, Highland Avenue from Oak Hill Road, really essentially almost to um, Portage uh, on the eastern side of the city where at the ballparks there. So we, we, we will now have that road in, in pretty decent shape. So, so both of those are, are planned to construct this summer uh, and we are uh, working right now to uh, make sure that we have an equalization board being set up to uh, take any any things, and that's on your agenda for this evening. So looking forward to that. Um, goal eight is a sludge tank, and um, also uh, uh, talking about the award that we were given over the, the summer. Uh, the award is from the ICMA, uh, International uh, City Managers Association, uh, Local Government Excellence Award. Uh, the city was uh, noted for being one of the few uh, in the country um, for an excellence in community sustainability. We are one of few that actually use biogas generated off of our digester to create electricity that runs both our wastewater treatment plant and our water plant, and even has some to spare that we could sell off onto the line, um, but we, we try to contain uh, that so that uh, we don't run into some of the, the distribution charges that are, are in, in place on uh, public lines like that. So, uh, but it's nice to be recognized as being a forward commun thinking community and uh, utilizing a resource that is really just vented off in most other places or flared. But the sludge tank is something that uh, you've heard about uh, because uh, sludge is a, a natural product of wastewater. And it's something that once it's been digested, and, and especially the way we have our plant with a heat level now, it, it's called Class A sludge. So it, it's, it's something that can, you could use it on your own gardens and, and things. So uh, really no pathogens, no, nothing like that. In fact, sometimes if you buy it at one of the big box stores, you, you are buying Class A sludge from some other site in America. Um, but this sludge is, as I say, a natural component uh, of, of, uh, of wastewater. It's something that we have uh, worked with farmers in the area that we spread on fields, but there are only certain times that you can do that during the year because of the wetness of the fields or the uh, ability to get into them. So we've had to have uh, lagoons to hold the sludge, and uh, that brings a smell out with it, and that's what has, uh, from time to time, been smelled in our downtown. So this tank is a $2 million tank uh, that will be a sludge containment and essentially have a roof over it and will keep the smells at bay. And so this is our solution to trying to keep the smells from uh, invading out of the footprint of the plant. So. So that's the, the thought behind that. Right now we're ready to go out to bid within the next few weeks and then about three weeks for the return uh, of the bidders and uh, then we'll let the job and it should, should go this summer. Uh, and steel was a concern how long of a lead time we had on that but uh, from what, what we've been told is that is not as much of a constraint now. So I think we should have this up and running uh, by hopefully the fall of this year. And our last goal uh, is the Christmas run pre pool rehabilitation. And really this is just to start a conversation. Christmas run pool has been a great resource for our city. It was built in 1948. In, it had to have a liner put in it in, it in 1975. And then the bath, bath house that was built in 48 with the pool had to be reconstructed or, or remodeled here in 2003 to meet uh, ADA compliance guidelines and things. So, so we've, we've put money into the pool. The community came to bat for the pool when we were in harder times and thought we might have to close it. And they raised $100,000 as a grassroots effort to keep the pool in place. And so uh, we know that there's definitely um, a love of this facility and at this site. The problem with it is what you see in the right-hand side of that picture is uh, we started having some leaks here, and uh, they were, were not 
out of the ordinary, uh, just, just sort of normal uh, operations. But we started getting them larger and more often. And so we ended up having a welder come in and take a look and a pool system uh, group come in and look. And what we found, the stainless steel panels of the, of the uh, liner are, are still in decent shape. They, the stainless steel, you know, no rust, no, no adverse problems. Behind that, though, when they did it, um, they used regular steel. And uh, because of the chlorine in the water and, and uh, those components, just the moisture inside those walls, it, the steel, regular steel rusted. And so the framework that was holding the panels is falling apart. We've had a number of the panels fixed and uh, put uh, back into use. We will open this summer with the pool. Uh, we believe there's no question about safety or, or uh, reliability, but we know that the rest of it is going to have to be addressed within the next four to five years. So it's time to start a community conversation to see what can, that can bring about. Um, we've got about four options. One option is, is uh, uh, about a $150,000 option, and that would be to go in and fix the, in, the superstructure behind those uh, stainless steel panels and then grout with a type of cement be, uh, behind the, between the panel and the cement wall. Um, as I say, about 150000 we forecast that would last maybe about five years, and we'd be back looking at things again. Option two is uh, replace the, um, the compromised wall and supports with stainless the whole way around. We feel that'd last approximately 15 years and cost about $800,000 to do. Option three would be to replace the whole thing uh, with a new pool uh, because it's, it's not quite the same uh, level of entertainment in today's day and age as it was back in the 40s. Uh, that is the most expensive, probably about two and a half million dollars to, to create a new pool, pool at that site. And then the fourth option is to abandon it and demo the pool and, uh, and make it just parkland again. And that would be about $100,000 to achieve that. So, so big decisions. I'd, I'd like to get a community group uh, that would study uh, and, and uh, make recommendations to myself and council as far as uh, what would be a good way to proceed with, with the, our Christmas run pool. So those are the, the goals that we have set up as a, as a community for the next year. And uh, we'll move on to sort of look quickly at what else we have facing us. And uh, definitely when you talk uh, running a, a facility and community like ours, you're talking finances. So uh, this is with the help of uh, Andre, our uh, finance director. And this just came out about a week ago, two weeks ago, something like that, a week ago. Uh, from Moody's, uh, you know, their credit rating uh, group, uh, well recognized in the United States, they gave us a Moody's AA2 credit rating. Uh, Worcester's 2020 credit position is very strong and higher than the median for U.S. cities. Uh, satisfactory economy and tax base, predictable revenues and expenditures. So in uh, accounting speak, that, that is a pretty strong uh, Attaboy come in our direction, saying that we are doing things right in our community. They, they don't get much more glowing than that in, in any ratings that I have seen. So, <coughs> so that, that was a, a, a nice thing to find, find in the mail uh, here a week ago. Um, these are our, a picture of our 2019-2020 finances and, and a look back. Uh, you've seen this graph before because we felt it, it gives consistency in how we're looking at things. The green line is our, the, the combined finances. The blue line is the income tax we, we receive. And the red line is other uh, income resources that, that come into the city. So uh, you notice that that dotted uh, dashed red line is uh, 2019. That looks uh, high there, and it, and it is, but it, it's a great story because this is something that we had not planned, but for uh, some 
reason and probably good business practices, there is, was an entity in the city that received a one-time inco income tax event of a million dollar net profit tax. So it was a uh, million dollars that we were not counting for coming into our city coffers in 2019, and that's the reason you see that, that upward bump. And uh, that was, was an unplanned event for us, but a very, very uh, good unplanned event. So, but for 2020, you see that line look like it's dipping down because of the height of that. It really isn't. Our, our uh, resources, our, our income stream is up about two, between two and three percent. So it's a good steady growth in, in, our, uh, in our financial picture and uh, for that we're that very thankful. So if you have any more questions on that, Andre will be happy to uh, help us out as after we get done with this. Um, here's a, a look at our general fund expenditure trends uh, over the years. Um, I'm going to have to go to this because I can't see that far away, but uh, capital uh, transfer is something that, uh, look at back in 2009, 10, 11, and, and 12, we had some grant dollars that we were going to lose if we didn't do some pro projects, so the 12 was a little bit bigger. Then in 13, we, we asked for an income tax increase, and, and look at how the blue expands after that tax increase to where we were really funding lots of capital transfers into our infrastructures. Um, also, the, the personnel uh, has remained steady. Uh, now, it has had some growth, but that's because wages and benefits have grown in, in every sector uh, over the years, so that is just a normal growth there. Um, our personnel is actually at 187 full-time employees as of today. When I started, we were at 189 employees. So, so that means that we're holding the line as far as uh, taking on new people that, uh, that we are uh, uh, responsible to, to keep employed. Now, I know that I see some questions on Mr. Sanders' face. That doesn't say positions. Uh, we just have not been able to fill those positions yet. And, and with our police force, that, that is uh, always a rolling type of thing to, you know, you, you get three positions that you're going to try to get filled and you get close to doing that and then all of a sudden one or two to move on. So. So it's a, a constant wrestling match with that, but, but we are still holding the line on, on our expenses. Um, this is city investment in utilities and capital. Again, another good story. Uh, the red line is general government, so you guys can translate that to roadways. Uh, so all of the road improvements that we've been doing over these last years, uh, it shows up as the, the red line and, and the height of that red line because that is our general fund government funding the road improvements. Um, also, sanitary sewer has uh, had some pretty good sized spikes in there too, so I, it, it just shows that we are, are giving uh, due uh, resources to, to our uh, utilities and to our, our infrastructure in the city. So with that, we'll look at what we had happen in our community over the years, and these will probably move a lot faster on. Here's one thing that uh, we're very pleased happened and very uh, thankful for the cooperation between Wayne County, uh, CIC Community Investment Corporation, and our Worcester Growth Corporation. Uh, this is where the Old Horns Nursing Home site uh, is, uh, and we ended up buying that site out of uh, the uh, bankruptcy court, essentially. Uh, to uh, put it back into useful purpose. We ended up demolishing the building and having it um, taken down. To date, we've spent about $635,000 in, in both of those endeavors along with an environmental uh, inspection and uh, some miscellaneous uh, taxes, I guess, that, that were property taxes that were due. Um, we had uh, Weaver and Ray and Associates as uh, two bidders that decided to combine their bid and they won it and uh, they plan on building these two buildings there. The bottom one is an office complex for Ray and Associates and they are, have already been through planning commission last month and are hoping to start construction here yet this, this spring or early summer. 
So the building on the bottom really should start taking shape very soon. The build, two buildings on the top are condominiums, uh, so residential units. They plan on having six of them uh, along Market Street, and then another six uh, later on that will uh, front on Walnut Street uh, in the back uh, of the property. So, so a very nice uh, residential development uh, combined with a, a uh, commercial development. So, and, a, and really such an improvement for that section of, of town that it was uh, you know, dealing with the, the, the old structure of the Horns Nursing Home. So that's a great story. Here's another great story. The Joyful Cafe opened up at uh, Health Point, uh, Worcester Community Hospital. Uh, it was dealing with um, a partnership between them and Heather and Amanda Yates uh, to provide help at the uh, Joyful <coughs> Cafe with people with disabilities, developmental type of disabilities. And so they're using that group as a workforce and it has worked out extremely well. So it's a very nice story on that one. Um, here's something else that happened uh, in early 2019. This is the Buckeye Agricultural Museum down across from the fairgrounds. Uh, very nice uh, tribute to the heritage uh, of our area. So the history of agriculture in the area. And so congratulations to the, to the people that made that happen because I think it's a nice addition to our town. Um, here's just a very uh, two day old picture of what's happening out at the OARDC. This is right across from the Schistler Center. It's a new science building. You can see the, the design <laughs> graphic in the top of uh, what it's going to look like. And uh, it's already three stories into the air. So it's coming along very quickly. It's a great thing. It's a $33 million building uh, that Ohio State University chose to build here in Worcester. So that uh, shows that, that they still consider our town as a uh, uh, a great place to, uh, to grow the university and, and in fact we are the second largest campus of Ohio State University in land mass here in, in the Worcester campus. So, so good, good story there. Also they did, did an improvement to the uh, building that used to hand, uh, pretty much be a, a, a shop for the agricultural equipment and they said that they needed a welcome center for the Seacrest Arboretum. So they've, they've improved that. Um, in fact, uh, I've been to two events there. One was a, uh, a very nice tribute to the people who uh, gave to make this happen. And then the, uh, the other was the Ohio State University Board of uh, Governors came and held one, a meeting of the board back in August of last year. Uh, so a very good compliment, nice compliment to our community on that. Here's something reading under the lights. This is the third year uh, that it happened in 2019 down at Mauer Field. Uh, it's really a community read along. Uh, we, our police and fire uh, departments are, were fully involved. I was fortunate enough to be a, a reader down there also. The schools, United Way, library, and others are, are to uh, be complimented for putting this together. The kids walk out of there with five free books, so any kid that shows up can take five three books of their choosing out with them to read over the summer. So, so a neat program. Uh, here's a new business that uh, opened up uh, in our downtown. This is called Underground's Cafe. It's in the basement of Liberty Commons, so down where Muddy's uh, originated. So really nice operation, good food, and uh, so uh, people uh, would uh, be uh, thankful if we would patronize them. So a, a nice facility. The Wayne Trails, we did a uh, ride this uh, past year to raise money for Wayne Trails. So we're trying to connect Worcester to the uh, Rails to Trail head in Fredericksburg, Ohio. And uh, council worked with us on that. And uh, the signs in the middle there at the top are what uh, council approved to pay for, uh, for that uh, uh, trail marking between our city and the trailhead in Fredericksburg. And uh, so thank you, council, for approving that. Uh, this is uh, maps of where we're trying to, what we're trying to achieve in, in the county with uh, interconnectivity with the trails. So, so good group working on that. Um, this is uh, just a highlight. This doesn't happen very often that you have a volunteer that works for free for 42 years. Tom Hilt has been on our city parks and rec uh, commission for 42 years, and uh, he decided that uh, it was time to to move on in 2019, and so we, we did a, a nice 
thank you to him at the Parks and Rec Commission uh, back earlier in 2019. So uh, thank you, Tom, for, for many years of service uh, to our community. Uh, here's another new business downtown. It's nice to have these uh, opening up. Uh, this is called Graham and Burns. Uh, all kinds of uh, neat little gifts and, and, uh, and things in the store. Um, and uh, we sure welcome uh, the uh, Chris and Lisa uh, Sturzik who have opened up this store. They came from, uh, I think, Seattle is where they were. Uh, part of a business that uh, Smuckers obtained and they were moved to the area and, and decided that they wanted to open up the store. So, so a nice, nice business. Uh, please stop in and say hi to them. Bike Rodeo, something our police have done uh, for a number of years now. It's an annual event that kids look forward to it. It's really uh, helpful in helping little kids learn how to ride a bike. So uh, that's something that our, our police have been in fully involved with, the Qantas Club Ride On, Boy Scouts, um, and uh, it usually happens right on the same day that Kids Day is in the city. So, so a good event. Um, Commercial and Savings Bank opened up uh, a new anchor office at the bottom of Bell Avenue, and they're on Liberty Street. So, so that it, they had a ribbon cutting back in June of 2019, and it became officially open at that location. And we sure thank them for for investing in in that sector of the city that we're trying to uh, get build up. Hospital won a top 100 hospital award again. Uh, it's the fifth time we've won that it's since 2008. It truly is one of the highest uh, awards for quality uh, assurance in, in the hospital world. And so we, we are very uh, thrilled to have won that again. Cleverly and Associates is a, uh, another award that's uh, closer to home if they're out of the Columbus area but it's for community value in, in a medical system. And so it sort of measures different things, but again, we were awarded the Cleverly and Associates Award for, for excellence in, in the 2019 year. This is something we tried for, uh, first time, is uh, Movies on the Square happened last year, and uh, it was pretty neat. They brought in, a, uh, we did it in conjunction with Main Street and uh, helped have the, the facilities uh, on the square. Uh, it was a group that came in and set all the lights and the, and the screen and everything up and uh, it was a nice night and for a first time event I thought it went really well. So I think there's uh, interest in doing it again this year but it will probably be uh, possibly on the library uh, site. So, so that's where we're at that. Uh, and then here's something that you know that we will feel very very proud of, and that's the redo of the Freelander Chalet up at uh, Freelander Park. Uh, our, our maintenance team uh, and the craftsmen that work for us there have really did all of the work in this side of this building. It is a, a beautiful building. I think council has all been there and, and seen it. Um, this is sort of a, what it would look like uh, for, set up for a wedding type of event. Uh, we can seat 190 people at tables in it. and. Uh, about 300 in, in chairs, so it's, it's a good size venue and uh, pretty reasonably priced. So, so hopefully we're, we're seeing some real good rentals coming in the door for, for the Freelander Chalet. This is something the county did this year. They conducted Wayne Onward. Uh, if, uh, it's a planning tool for the future. Um, they finished the document and it was released early this year. I think we've got a copy about three weeks ago here at the, the, the mayor's office. So um, we are, are pleased the county is doing planning uh, exercises to help guide uh, our, our growth as a county and, uh, and, uh, and really appreciate their, their um, buy-in and, and uh, spending the money to, to make that happen. I think it's a, a, a good study to, uh, to work with. This is something all of you are, are pretty intimately aware of as Jason Anderson started a campaign to get General David Worcester uh, in a statue and uh, council uh, decided that that uh, was a, a good uh, use and uh, funded it I think about $12,000 if I'm not mistaken and uh, it is uh, I think moving forward and should be in front of the library at some point in the future. I don't have, know a, a date for that at this point but I know it's still moving forward. I ran into Jason just the other day and he, he said things were, were moving along pretty well. 
This is something our police force has done for a number of years in conjunction with, um, uh, it, it was with Brett Deffenbaugh at um, Bowman Beverage. And it, it's called the 5-0 Cookout. And it te technically is just a neighborhood cookout. They invite people in for hot dogs and, and uh, you know, drinks. And uh, they have some games for the kids. The fire trucks have shown up and uh, spray water. And so it's, a, uh, you know, it's just a fun event. It's really a nice way for the police and, and firefighters, our, our uh, safety services, to be seen in the community. And it's not somebody to fear or, or scared of. Uh, it's just people, and then they're pretty pretty nice guys. So, so guys and gals. So it's uh, something that that Brett and, and I know Matt and the team have worked on for five years. Matt, something like that, maybe. I think it's three. Three. Three years. Um, this is something else that uh, we are working with. Uh, AEP has been trying to upgrade transmission lines in, that service our city. Uh, phase one was, I think, uh, started a couple years ago, and it uh, helped improve the electric out towards Luke and, and the Scheffler um, building. Uh, this year they're working on phase two, which would be on the northwest corner of our city. Um, up along Oak Hill Road and then on out to, um, I think that's uh, Smithville Western there. And so you're going to see some activity there, but it, they've been very uh, open and, and, uh, and upfront with the administration on uh, trying to prevent any type of uh, issues or problems out of the, their upgrade. Marks came into the town, uh, and this is, is really nice because we've been trying to get that Portage Rose Road Plaza area to uh, improve and, and get some new life in it, and Marks has definitely breathed quite a bit of new life along with uh, Planet Fitness in that area. So, so you go by there about any time, day and night now, and you see a lot of cars in those parking lots. Hobby Lobby took the space of Elder Beerman on the north end, so uh, another nice new addition to town, and it, it's always great to have uh, full storefronts. Uh, empty storefronts uh, don't, don't help anyone, so we're, we're pleased that they came in and, and uh, filled the spot. Uh, Main Street Worcester uh, has a new leader in Shannon Waller. Uh, in fact, I think she may be here with us tonight. I don't, don't see her yet, but uh, she was planning on coming. But um, she took over uh, from Sandra in uh, November of last year, and uh, she's trying to, to move the ball forward for, for our city and, and organization. This is Wayne County Fair Event Center. It opened. Uh, the chamber held their... Uh, their annual dinner there, um, a very nice facility, and it's great because it's so close in proximity to our downtown. So I, I believe that our restaurants, hotels, and, and businesses will see upticks from uh, events taking place in, in this facility. Um, this is our leadership go government leadership uh, class that we put on here in the city to help people understand what the city does and how it happens. Uh, we had a nice, nice group this time, and uh, so I just wanted to highlight uh, that that happened in the fall of last year, and, and we'll have another class this coming fall. Uh, the Fallas Field held a plaque dedication to Charles Fallas. Uh, it was one of the historical markers and, and sort of told his story. He was a heck of an athlete, I'll tell you, and, and he played right here in, in Worcester, Ohio. So it was, it was a nice... Nice tribute, and uh, the, of course the field is named after him uh, up at the high school. So. Um, the roller property. This is uh, something that the Friends of Worcester Memorial Park uh, had gotten a grant to uh, acquire, and uh, were able to buy it off of the rollers and have added it onto uh, the footprint of what is called Worcester Memorial Park. And so uh, at some point, I'm, I'm thinking they will be donating that into the city, but at this point, it is still owned by the Friends of Worcester Memorial Park, which is a great organization for us. Meeting and Moore celebrated 100 years in operation uh, corporately, so uh, congratulations to them. They're out off of uh, Portage Road, uh, just uh, on the northeast side of our city. Uh, of course, we have the Worcester Fest uh, that the Chamber puts on every year. It's our, truly our city party, and uh, it's, it's truly a, a big and fun event. So uh, we thank the Chamber for all their help in, in, in making it a fun place. Up oh, there's somebody that <laughs> actually came and visited us tonight also. Rick Armand is the new editor for the Daily Record. Uh, he joined uh, back, back around uh, October, was it? September. 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 And so, 
Uh, Rick's, uh, I think, uh, doing a pretty nice job down that way. He's one of the first editors that I actually uh, got a chance to, to visit with closely, and it actually took him around Worcester and showed him a few spots uh, around town. So uh, we, we look forward to working with you, Rick, and, and appreciate what the Daily Record does. Uh, having a community newspaper is, is really something uh, you, you want to keep in, in a community. It, it just brings a, a healthy uh, communication piece, and I know that papers in general are fighting, fighting battles, so we are thankful that you're, you're here and doing it. Um, Mike and Steph Reardon were honored with the um, uh, community um, philanthropy, friend of philanthropy award. Boy, I get talking too fast and hard, hard to say that. Uh, that happened uh, in the uh, November range of last year, and, uh, and Mike and Steph Reardon are, are true uh, champions of our community and, and have given so much to this town. So I, I applaud the Community Foundation for recognizing them with, with that uh, very high award. Uh, Heritage Ohio uh, called Worcester uh, one of the best uh, community, small communities in downtown placemaking. And that's for our north, northeast quad with the pavilion on it. Uh, they they uh, gave us this award at uh, the annual meeting in October of last year. And uh, it's, it's a very nice award to, to have people from another area of the state uh, recognize you know, the achievements in your town. Oh, and there, there's a group for us. Uh, we did have what's called an election on November 5th of last year. And uh, so these are our new elected officials. But luckily, I, I see many familiar faces there because really all of the incumbents stayed, stayed in office. So I, I guess we must be doing something halfway right, folks, because uh, people are, are, are saying uh, they keep putting us back in uh, when, when we were at the... We welcome Becky Foster to the commissioner. She's been a real nice uh, advocate and, uh, and a good partner for us. So it's uh, nice to have her there. Uh, Sandra, we recognized her at the, the annual meeting in November um, for uh, Main Street and uh, her retirement after 32 years leading Main Street Worcester uh, under her, her guidance. And uh, we thought it only appropriate to give her uh, something that uh, she always had, and that's Sandra's way. She, she was always one that uh, uh, <laughs> sort of uh, worked it so that she managed to, to get what she was, was gunning for. So we made a sign, and uh, that's, uh, we said she could put it on a, a street uh, that didn't have a name. Uh, she could not change the names of streets. And so uh, she's putting it in the alley that we up, uh, improved uh, right beside uh, uh, the Huntington Bank. And so you'll see that up on one of the poles there here shortly on that. So, And then, of course, we have our normal Christmas routine. Uh, but boy, we're getting an awful lot of people down at that. It's, I think uh, the small town atmosphere uh, brings in a lot of people from all over. And then Bill Sharon celebrated 25 years at leading at Worcester Community Hospital. He's done a great job for our community, a great job at the hospital, and, and we're very thankful to have him uh, in, in, as part of our team. So uh, we wish Bill the best and, and many more years at it. Um, Dave Benfield retired from, from uh, OARDC at the end of December last year. He was a, a great advocate and great partner for us, and uh, we, we look forward to hopefully having him help us out in other ways in the community, but, but very good man, and we're pleased to have gotten a chance to work with him over the years. Gojo, this is the show and tell part of, of the talk. They moved into our community back in, well, the first conversation started in December of 2014 to try to uh, get them to consider coming into a vacant facility. Um, we met with them, and, and then in May of 2015, they said, yep, we're coming. And uh, in that same breath, they found a company that they were using to make pumps, which is what this is. Um, and they were in Canada, and so they moved that company down into the, the old Rubbermaid facility, now the Gojo facility. And so that was their first business line. This is, if you walk up to one of those Purell uh, dispensers and put your hand under it and it goes yes, and squirts it into your hand, it's because of that thing right there. That's the pump inside the, the thing. So that was their first 
product that they started making, and that was, uh, again, in uh, the summer of 2015. So they've been growing and, and doing great. They actually put the, uh, reconstituted the rail line off the North, Norfolk Southern Railroad up into the factory, and that's really been a, a big thing for them because they don't have any other facilities with a rail line into them. So they uh, were pleased about that, and so they just keep on growing. The next thing they brought us, and, they, and they're so kind that they bring, bring us little souvenirs to, to market. Here on December 14th of 2017, they put blow molding into effect. And uh, so this is the jar. In fact, there's one right there beside Rick Armand uh, there on the Purell dispenser. That holds the Purell liquid inside those dispensers. And they're making these in Worcester starting in, in 2017. Well, then just here within the last couple of weeks, um, Tom Martin, who's a, a good friend from out there at Gojo, brought this to us. December 17th was, uh, of 2019 was the manufacture date. And here now is the completed product. It has Purell manufactured in Worcester, Ohio, inside the thing, inside this blow molded bottle that's built and manufactured in Worcester, Ohio, and the pump that was manufactured in Worcester, Ohio. So everything in this now is, is manufactured here. You see them all over, and uh, with the things happening with this coronavirus, uh, I, I think that Gojo is going to do very well in, in keeping safe products out there to keep uh, germs away from people. So, so very pleased to have them here as a part of our community. Here's something new uh, that conversations are going around the community. I uh, had a couple people stop up and, and visit with us just at the end of the year. They want to bring Lyric Theater back to life and uh, with a movie a portion of it or it just is regular theater seating, but then more of a cabaret type of thing where they have uh, individuals performing, uh, you know, or, or singing or, or something. So, so a neat thing, uh, it would be a great thing for our square to have that uh, aspect uh, as uh, something for people to do. Here's a couple things I wanted to just point out here at the very end. The census is happening. It's a, a big thing. So please encourage people to fill out the census, uh, either online or mail or uh, by telephone. Uh, the reason for that is we depend on uh, that count accuracy for money coming back to our community. Things like Medicare, Medicaid, student, uh, student loans, uh, heating assistance, housing um, uh, assistance, the, uh, the supplemental uh, nutrition, uh, the SNAP program, all of that. In 2016, 33 billion, 33529 billion dollars were given back to the state of Ohio from the federal government because of the census numbers. So as long as we have people counted, we will get good good feedback from your federal taxes. It also re uh, influences how many representatives we have in the House of Representatives of the government. So. You want to have a good count to uh, keep our, our voice heard with our Washington uh, counterparts. And here's something that just came in about a week or so ago. Uh, Polycom is uh, recognizing Worcester as number seven in their 2020 ranking. Uh, it's not often numbers that were uh, derived in 2019. That, that's truly a, a very high honor for us. Uh, we've been at number five in the last two years. So being at number seven, uh, that's still pretty darn good. I, it doesn't, I still want to go the other direction, <laughs> but there are two reasons why we are at number seven, and I want to point them out. If you look, you see Breckenridge, Colorado, just above the yellow line. That is uh, a ski resort out in Colorado, very, uh, very nice ski resort out there with a, a town attached to it to, to service it. They made the list this year. And uh, up where you, just second from the top, Vineyard Haven, Massachusetts. Have you ever heard of a little place called Martha's Vineyard? That's what that is. So it, it took two very well-known resorts to knock us two pegs down. Otherwise, we would have still been at the number five level. So, so that makes me feel a little bit better. 
One thing I did want to note in the yellow line, um, in 2012, you see that we were number 200 in the ranking. 2013, we came to 167. Um, then we continued down to where we got to number five. The, the person that puts Polycom together uh, was uh, the speaker at the Wayne Economic Development annual, annual meeting uh, last year. And I talked to him afterwards, and he said, do you know why that's happening? And I said, well, I think we're doing things right. And he goes, you are. He said, what happened in 2013 in your community? And I said, well, we had to go for an income tax increase because we were trying to keep our town moving forward. And he said, bingo. He said, it's because you are reinvesting in your town <coughs> that that started you coming up in the rankings because we look for people that are truly involved and invested in, in their in their facilities and in their community. So, so I, I was, was very interested in, in his comment on that. So, so that's a good story. And with that, thank you. This uh, gives you a bit of a story of what happened in 2019 and where we're going in 2020. So.